When mentioning the name Blue Origin, we immediately think of their slow progress and delays in rocket production. The new Glenn rocket has undergone over a decade of development without any flights, and the BE-4 rocket engine has repeatedly been criticized for Blue Origin's late deliveries to their ULA customers. However, now, faced with a superior development situation of competitors in the industry, especially SpaceX, Blue Origin can no longer sit still. For the first time in 24 years, their BE-4 engine has flown on the first flight of the Vulcan rocket, shaking up the entire space industry. And yet, they also revealed the huge things they did to the BE-4 engine to prepare for the fierce space war of the future, to the point that NASA scientists were shocked. So, what exactly did Blue Origin just do with that BE-4 engine? And how will Blue Origin use its ace in the hole to compete with SpaceX? Is the BE-4 engine as reliable as we think it is? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. With the success of the Vulcan rocket, the BE-4 engine subsequently emerged as a key factor in helping Blue Origin return to the space race. Following a spectacular public demonstration of creating a relatively clean mock diamond exhaust stream, the BE-4 engine continued to be a hot topic of discussion when Blue Origin released a video of a hot fire test with the BE-4 engine at the historic test stand 4670 in Huntsville, where their engine factory is located. A loud roar echoed as the BE-4 engine emitted a powerful and pristine blue exhaust, confirmed by the company to achieve 550,000 pounds of thrust, as well as being their most powerful engine yet. This engine test at the location attracted the attention of many nearby residents, not only due to the deafening sound of the BE-4, but also because Blue Origin's testing site is the former Saturn V test stand, long unused. Blue Origin has established a base here, akin to a declaration of a future that'll leave a historic mark following in the footsteps of the Saturn V. They've been renovating 4670 since April 2019, when they first entered into an agreement with NASA to use the test stand at the Marshall Space Flight Center to test the BE-4 and BE-3U. The site will be focused on qualification testing of flight engines rather than development testing, which will remain at their XEEX testing site in Texas. As the production of engines ramp up, we can expect to see an increase in testing. This serves as a convenient supplement given the proximity to engine manufacturing facilities. Consequently, it'll streamline the certification process for engines, ultimately expediting their production. Looking at current and future forecasts for BE4 demand, the company will soon require a substantial number of engines. Blue Origin plans to produce up to 50 BE-4 engines per year to support both their internal New Glenn program and ULA's Vulcan Centaur program. Both vehicles require engines in their initial stages, seven for New Glenn and two for Vulcan. However, there are some differences in design between the BE-4s flying on Vulcan and those assigned to New Glenn. For one, although the seven BE-4 engines on New Glenn are designed to be reusable, in initial flights, boosters may fail to land, resulting in lost hardware. Additionally, even in successful launches, multiple boosters may be required, each needing an additional seven engines. ULA ultimately aims to make its Vulcan rocket partially reusable, but at least for the next few years, the BE-4s on Vulcan will be single-use. Therefore, Blue Origin's production and testing capabilities for rockets will not stop at the old number. It can be said that the rapid acceleration for the BE-4 engine demonstrates Blue Origin's desire to make significant strides this year, as evidenced by recent movements in the development of the New Glenn rocket prototype. On January 11th, Blue Origin released the first images of the initial phase of the New Glenn rocket. Images of Phase 2 with two BE-3U engines followed shortly thereafter. On January 22nd, these two stages were officially installed for the first time after years of anticipation marking one of the most significant milestones in Blue Origin's history. Not content to stand still, Blue Origin wrapped up three tanking tests on New Glenn's first stage in the first week of March, promising that rest assured there's much more to come. While this progress in New Glenn is fascinating, it only heightens our curiosity about the BE-4 engine, something that did not appear in those prototype reveals. Perhaps this testing process is unnecessary for installing the BE-4 because the rocket hardware is not used for flight. It could also be that Blue Origin is so confident in its abilities that it's preparing for mass production to open up a level playing field with SpaceX's Raptor engine. Although Blue Origin was established earlier, everyone understands that Blue Origin's achievements are far behind SpaceX's. Besides rockets that have never reached orbit by BO, previous engines like the BE-3 clearly cannot compete with SpaceX engines like Merlin or Raptor. That's why the BE-4 is like their lifeboat. The BE-4 is a large engine producing 5 and 50,000 pounds of thrust and is designed to be highly throttleable, which is necessary for soft landing of recoverable boosters. The engine burns liquefied natural gas instead of the traditional rocket-grade kerosene, 
a choice made for clean burning characteristics at low throttle settings, but also to harness the boiler of LNG and propellant tanks to enable pressurization without external helium systems. Like the SpaceX Raptor, the BE-4 is a stage combustion design, meaning a small portion of fuel and oxidizer are diverted to a pre-burner where combustion gases are used to power the engine turboprops. Pre-burner fuel ratios are typically oxygen or fuel rich, and the combustion gases are ported to the main engine combustion chamber, creating a closed cycle. Closed cycle systems are more efficient than older designs, which dump combustion gases overboard or used independent power systems to drive the pumps. This simplifies the process of reusing engines compared to hydrocarbon fuels. In the case of New Glenn, this is extremely important. The combination of engine propulsion and efficiency is aimed at reusability. The goal is for New Glenn to land in the refurbishment process to be relatively simple and quick. But does Blue Origin have the capability to achieve this goal? Are their engine products always stable, even though we've witnessed them in action? What Blue Origin's doing is indeed very positive for their BE4 engine. However, doubts still linger because their BE4 engines undergone a development process that was not as expected. In the past, there were some issues with BE4 engines progress and delivery to ULA. In August 2020, Tori Bruno announced that the second BE4 test would be delivered soon, followed by the first flight qualified one. He noted an ongoing issue with the BE4's turbo pumps at the time. Blue Origin was still addressing the matter concerning the 75,000 horsepower pumps responsible for delivering fuel to the BE4's main combustion chamber. Subsequently, according to Bruno's disclosures, Blue Origin addressed these issues and enabled the engine to enter production by the end of 2020. In early 2023, we also witnessed the successful performance of the BE-4, excelling in a static fire test for the Vulcan. However, the good times were short-lived, as on June 30, 2023, a BE-4 engine exploded just 10 seconds into testing, resulting in damage to the test stand. This particular engine was intended for use in the second Vulcan flight. Since the incident, the company has not provided much information, with most updates come from Tori Bruno. Bruno clarified that every engine component, including electrical boxes and composite overwrap pressure vessel, undergoes an acceptance test as they come off the production line to verify their workmanship. The one-time qualification process ensures that the BE-4 engines meet the design criteria. He mentioned that BE-4s on Certificate 1 had passed an acceptance test, ATP, as had many others. This engine that failed ATP suggests that the issue was indeed caused by poor workmanship and should not affect engines that have already passed these tests and been installed on Vulcans. These kind of failures were relatively common at the beginning of a production run, but became rare as automated shutdown systems became finely tuned. In general, there are still many issues that Blue Origin probably needs to fly more BE-4 engines to understand. Hopefully this time Blue Origin can achieve what they've been striving for over the past decade with a powerful BE-4 engine. Hopefully, Blue Origin's new CEO, Dave Limp, delivers on his words. He said, I'm very confident there's going to be a launch this year. We're going to show a lot of progress this year. I think people are going to see how fast we can move. So, what do you think about the capabilities of the BE-4 engine? Please let us know in the comments section down below what you're thinking. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.